According to the Mental Health Institute, 62% of business owners feel depressed at least once a week. So why is that? Well, that's what I'm going to attempt to answer in this episode. All right, to be candid, I'm sharing this because this week I fell myself into a familiar cycle of sort of anxiety and depression. Last month, January 2024, we had our second highest revenue month in business. Then as we get 10, 11 days into February, it's now February 14th, earlier this week, we were on pace to have a really bad month. And we had some you know, problems we were trying to work through, front end sales were really down, which you know, when you have $450,000 in overhead, it can create a lot of stress and anxiety. For me, I was waking up at 2 a.m. with these fleeting racing thoughts like, and just unable to fall back asleep, right? Like what's gonna happen if we can't make payroll? What's gonna happen if this all fails and this crumbles and I'm gonna be a failure and oh my gosh, I don't know if I can take this. You know, it's like been here before. If you're watching this, you probably have been here as well. And this occurs at every single level, but I'll share with you today how you can actually overcome this and kind of where it comes from because I'm always learning about this idea and this topic to try to master it, okay, to try to conquer it. And so it's a familiar space for me in terms of anxiety and depression because, you know, from 13 to 25, I personally battled with this pretty hard. You know, I've been on every SSRI, SNRI, even antipsychotics in my teens, wild remedies that I've tried that I'm not actually going to share today. But at 25, 26 years old, really something shifted for me. And that was actually when I competed in bodybuilding. See, that process really transformed me. And not just physically, like sure, I got super jacked and yoked, uh, you can see right here. But that's really not the point. I learned how to truly fall in love and the contentness and the power that comes with just process of doing something that's hard every single day, having your head down. You know, if you think about a lot of indigenous civilizations outside of our modern day culture that still exist today, they don't understand this term depression. It doesn't really exist, right? Why is that? Well, because they're fucking busy. They have to work to feed themselves, to care for their family. Their intrinsic value is feeding back into their community and they just don't have time to think about being depressed, which I, I find is really interesting. And so when I realize how powerful it can be when you fall in love with just inputs and doing the thing every single day. It's going to be hard. Sure, it's going to be hard. But you know what's harder is feeling like shit. And so for this period during my prep, you know, I was dialed in. I never missed a meal, a workout, a cardio session. I didn't drink. I didn't party. I was focused on building myself. In fact, during this time, this is how I met my wife, Erin. And when I met my wife, Erin, that's when a lot of things in my life truly transformed. We've gone on to build this business together, to have a son. And I believe that I manifested her into my life because I was growing as a person. I was focused on the personal development, right? And I didn't have time to think and, and feel those negative thoughts. In fact, I was so focused on that work that other things started to appear in my life. Okay. So what's interesting though, is as I went through that process of the bodybuilding competition, by the time I got to show day, I remember thinking like, man, I don't really even feel like doing this. I just wanted to keep prepping, you know, but prepping is a super selfish sport in a lot of ways, right? Which I'll talk about in a second. But, you know, I get to the show day, get all greased up, oiled up, get on stage and I got third and I was devastated. In fact, I threw a fit. I was just fucking pissed. You know, I worked so hard how did I not get first? And, you know, there were two guys who were better than me. You know, it was like, oh, the judges, blah, 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 blah. Here's what it means. What does it mean to feel happy? And if I think about that experience, I was predicating my sense of happiness based on if I get what I want. What I wanted was to place first. But even if I did, it would be a fleeting feeling for a moment and then it would disappear. And this ties together with like building a business because like, what does it mean to feel happy and to not feel depressed and not feel anxious? Ultimately, in, all, in my mind, it has to do with, do we get what we want? That's at least how we internalize it. And I know that sounds selfish, but it's just true, right? You tend to feel more happy when things go your way versus otherwise. But what this does is it creates a situation where you're like, I'm only happy when I get what I want. And this is an idea of like conditional happiness, sort of like conditional love, right? Where it's like, I'm only going to love my partner if they act how I want them to act, if they treat me how I want them to treat me. So therefore, you're giving up power to an external vehicle to feel a certain way, which is always going to cause these cycles and these, these fleeting ups and downs. But the interesting thing was, is when I competed, I was 100 times happier when I was zoned in and just focused on the process of the day to day, as compared to when that competition drew, drew near, even if I would have gotten first, you know, sure, I would have been happy, but then I would have just chased the next thing. So I'll give you another, another example here. In our community, Impact Fitness Coaching Academy, we have about 350 active clients between our different programs. And these health and fitness coaches, we, we deal with this situation pretty often. So for example, we recently had a brand new coach who came in they had a really fast start. They did $20,000 in their first three to four months. They fell on top of the world. You know, oh, I'm crushing it. I'm amazing. I can do this. I feel confident. But then after their launch period, when the when the high kind of wore off, they spiraled, you know, they, they 
kind of went into a depression, if you will. And so she worked through it. She gained momentum. In fact, uh, last week, I guess she closed a new front end deal and back end deal. She did like $6,500 in new sales, feeling amazing, then back down again. And so why does this happen? Well, I think there are many reasons. It could be maybe you're chasing an outcome that isn't something that you truly desire, right? Maybe the thing that you're chasing is more conditional, things that you think you're supposed to be doing. But that's a deeper, more philosophical question that you have to get to the root of what you actually want. And to be honest, if you're young, you might not find that or, or learn that until later in life. But we have to just do things. We have to chase things. We have to pursue and grow as an individual to ever realize what that actual thing is. Or perhaps you just need a lot of internal work, right? Like your, your internal system is fucked up. But I'm not going to talk about that today because that's not what I what I know. I think 80 to 90 percent of us, the answer is, answer is actually pretty simple. We seek internal happiness through an external vehicle, which is our business. And that happiness, again, is conditional upon that thing working or not working, which is just a recipe for disaster when it comes to building a business. Because the reality is it takes most businesses three years just to become profitable and on average another seven to 10 years just to become stable, meaning they don't see as many huge fluctuations. It just feels like it feels stable. It feels concrete. And we're approaching our sixth, seventh year in business and I still don't really feel that way. See, the only way to really find peace and happiness while building a business has to do with growing yourself. All right. The work is the prize doing exactly what you say you're going to do every single day. If that means I'm going to send hundred DMS, you fucking do that. If that means I'm going to take eight sales calls in a day, you fucking do it. If you need to create three reels every day, because that's your strategy to try to get new eyeballs and, and generate leads, you fucking do it. And maybe you're getting to a point of scaling and you need to learn how to hire a team and, and grow a team or to learn paid advertising or, or whatever it is. You have to do it. And the personal growth is what will create that fulfillment, not winning, not actually getting the thing. Okay, because when you're doing this, what a lot of times can happen is you sacrifice your own rituals, your own habits, your own things that you did to become successful, and then you let those things go. Okay, there's a quote that I love. It says, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times. Think about it like this. David Goggins says, hey, it's a hell of a lot harder to get up and, and run 50 miles at 3 a.m. when you wake up in silk sheets. So the thing is, the more you do end up getting, getting something, the less it truly feeds you. You know, I've had many high revenue months big profit months, like big wins, big accomplishments. And the more times you experience those things, the less it truly feeds you. And then the more empty you feel when it does come, right? The less motivated you are. So we have to uh, separate our internal happiness from an external vehicle. So for example, this morning, I woke up still a little anxious, but you know what I did? I got up and I ran a mile and a half in 15 degree weather. I did some push ups, some air squats, some pull ups. I meditated. I took a cold shower. I got into a state and I did my personal rituals of hard things first thing. And then guess what? I'm not really anxious anymore. I feel pretty peaceful today. And I'm just focused on doing the work, doing the things every single day that are not going to lead to an outcome because I don't care as much about the outcome. I care about the, the growth that it's going to provide myself personally. Because the other side to this is if you can focus more on helping other people, okay, and your mission than yourself, you'll find fulfillment. Okay, life becomes a lot simpler, not easier, but simpler. See, when I say mission driven, I'm driven by my son, my wife and our team. It's really not about me anymore. It's about them. And so the only way that I can see and serve them at a high level is if I do build my own character daily. It's not about what we do. It's who we become. It's not about what should I do, it's who do I need to become. And that's there is no finish line to that, okay? In fact, every challenge you'll continue to face at different levels of business or life or whatever, you're gonna be faced with harder, harder realities that the only way to be able to meet that challenge is because you didn't shy away from the earlier ones, all right? So this is why also it kind of blows my mind when people say like, oh, fitness coaching isn't worth X amount of dollars, bro. Listen, for most people, that first transformation is the thing that is the catalyst for every other thing in their life. It was for a lot of us. If you're listening to this, it's probably true. You know, it starts with physical. Physical, because when you change your physical, you prove to yourself that you can be disciplined. You prove to yourself that you can do hard things day after day after day for really long periods, delay gratification, and then you start to transform spiritually and then financially, and then you start to develop better relationships and so on, and you become a more inherently valuable human. And the more valuable of a human you are, I think, the more fulfillment and happiness you'll find. So anyways, guys, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully this helped serve as maybe a quick gut check or just perspective shift, right? And come back to this. If you find yourself in these states, just, just remind yourself, like, you know, if, if something's not working, business isn't working, I'm feeling frustrated, I'm feeling fearful, then even if it was, it's not gonna solve the problem. What will solve the problem is by you just focusing on what you have to do today, but making sure that what you have to do today is the most important thing. See, a lot of times the thing that we avoid in our business or our life is the thing that is going to drive us the most forward. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. And that's where the prize is.
right? It's the, it's the cave you fear to enter on a daily basis. All right, so that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you uh, found some value in this and I will see y'all on the next one.